Hi, it's me, Joan, Mainline Sociology. Yesterday, after listening to my summary of Marx that I posted yesterday, when I listened to it, taking the role of the other, yes, it's, it's a little shocking. But as I said, Marx, Weber, and Durkheim were the founders of this science we call sociology, and they told us how society would operate. So there's more. Before I get to that, I'd like to talk about my grandfather because after I listened, I was walking my goats and I heard grandpa say, Martha, bring the Oli. And this is very important because as um, they got older, they started doctoring. And I talked to my friend yesterday and, and we had a long conversation about this. And in those days, and still today, advice from doctors was golden. You followed the rules. If the doctor said to do something, you would do it. And as I said, they, my grandparents, settled on the farm. And every summer, I would visit them and I loved them very much. And um, it was hard for me as they got older and I saw them taking all these pills and, you know, my grandmother having her breasts cut off and my grandfather having his stomach cut open. But maybe you don't know this, Waterville, which was the closest town to this farm, uh, it looked like this at one time. And just to compare, today it looks like this. And that's interesting. So it's also little known fact, um, was one of the first sites that the Mayo Qu Clinic looked at to build or form but they chose rochester which was it's it's close it's a few hours away by car and it started out as a catholic hospital as all hospitals did they were charity hospitals they were um founded by the catholic church okay Back to Oli, in case you don't know what that is. So the doctor told Grandpa, eat Oli. Butter's so bad for you. And this is the new way that we're going to keep you healthy. Well, let's fast forward to what we know now is that butter is a superfood. And I've known that for a very long time because my father uh, was a biochemist and and he, we'd say well what are we supposed to eat it's a whole other story um his career but he'd say well honey if you can catch it with your hands eat it without cooking it's probably safe and I'd say, well, what if I can't catch anything? What if there's nothing growing? And he'd say, well, you can live an awfully long time on a couple pats of butter a week, a vitamin pill, and some water. And so we've always known that butter is a superfood. So why was the doctor telling my grandfather to eat this Oli? And what exactly is it? That's a longer story, and um, but it is a a quote quote vegetable product that, um, as I said, you'd put the yellow food coloring in it and knead it up in a bag. 
and my grandfather always wanted the the yellow food coloring in there and um he wanted to have it you know mixed up really well <laughs> martha bring the oli and we i just saw some commercials advertising for this um plastic food that that was really introduced in um, the early 70s, maybe late 60s. Spread a good example. Hmm, better get some more parquet. See, they call it oleo. And my grandfather shorted, shortened that up to oli. He'd say, bring the oli. Well, he was doctoring at the Mayo Clinic, and as I mentioned, a lot of um, people then and people today, advice from a doctor was golden. If they said, don't eat butter, you didn't eat butter. So this is the first um, picture when when the it was opened, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester as a Catholic hospital. And got a picture of the operating theater for your viewing pleasure where I can imagine them butchering up my grandparents and it's heartbreaking, but this was sold through science as an act of love. It's important to remember that and same with promise, get heart smart. Well, what was going on at Mayo Here's a picture of one of the experiments that they did. What caught my eye the most, I wondered, well, who are these Mayo brothers that began this um, really central first and maybe Still today, Mayo is a, a very good place people think to go. And I found this narrative very familiar. And frankly, it's getting a little old uh, if you follow um, John Levy, as I have for a few years. We always come back to these stories that sound exactly like this. In 1819, a boy was in a small village near Manchester, England. He died when the boy was only seven. Oh, leaving his mother to raise him and his five siblings. And so on. What's fascinating is down here further, we say, in 1861, William W. Mayo, then living in Lesseur, Minnesota, volunteered for duty in the Union Army. But his application for regimental surgeon was denied. Why is this important, 1861? Because over and over we find this date founding the great institutions that as you know now were part of a very interesting and sinister plan so i just wanted to mention my grandfather and his obedience to doctoring as I remember the hundreds of pills inside the cupboards. <laughs>